Now CanFit Pro is taking on a new cause. That cause is autism. And autism is unfortunately now more common than childhood cancer, juvenile diabetes, and children with AIDS, and a host of other things combined. The World Health Organization has upgraded autism to one of the greatest health challenges in the whole world. So what is autism? It's a condition that happens in early childhood. It seems to happen around two. No one knows for sure what the cause is. It could be partly genetic, and it could be triggered by environmental things. And what happens for an autistic person is they get overwhelmed with the sounds and the smells that you and I take for granted, the things that we can just handle easily, the other people breathing in the room, the air conditioner, the lights. This stuff is like a rock concert to them. It's like every moment there's strobe lights and music pounding in their ear, all day, all the time. For a person with autism, this is what's going on. They become overcome, and so they withdraw. They withdraw socially. And most of all, they avoid eye contact, because eye contact is like looking in someone's soul, and that's so much information coming in. And for some reason, they seem to lose all or most of their language. And with this goes the ability to do normal things the same way. The way we reason is harder for them. And in addition to that, they get a host of phys physical illnesses, including especially stomach ailments. So what do they do? They try to control things. One of the big things they do is flap their hands because it creates focus. They'll bite their hands. They'll injure themselves. They'll pound their head against the wall. They'll rip out their hair. They're trying to have some form of control over the noise that's going on. And on top of that, autism isn't a standalone disorder. It's not all by itself. 30 to 50% of autistic kids have epilepsy, bipolar, schizophrenia. It wasn't like a sore stomach was bad enough. They get all this other crap going on. That's what autism is like. In fact, autism tortures me. It just tortures me. And I want you to understand how incredibly tragic autism is for a parent. How many people in here know a parent? This is a tough question. How many people know a parent, right? I bet you some of them are parents. So picture you're the blissful, proud parent of a two-year-old child. And you wake up thinking today is going to be like any other day, a normal day. You wake up, wake up expecting from your two-year-old child a greeting, maybe a hug, maybe a kiss. And what you most want is that child to gaze at you like you're the center of the universe. Except today when you get up, it's not that day. You, your life, and your child will never be the same again. In my case, I have an 18-year-old now, autistic daughter, who at just over two stopped talking, stopped looking at me, stopped communicating. She wouldn't let me hug her. She would throw her food across the floor, if she would eat her food. She wouldn't sleep. Parents of autism are faced with behavior that changes literally overnight. Their children scream. They throw tantrums in public. They bite themselves to their raw and bleeding. They pull out their siblings' hair. They pull out their own hair. They pull out your hair. You can't understand as a parent what's happening. You think, this is my fault. You think, maybe this is just an anomaly. Maybe it's just going to last a few days. Unfortunately, for most, it will last a lifetime. And I remember the day that I was told my daughter should be institutionalized. And I said, no way. So most of her life, she's been homeschooled. And because fitness is what I do, that's what I could do the most with her. And so we started with water, because autistic kids in general tend to love water. So my first eye contact with my daughter was underwater. She could hold her breath longer than me, right? 
After years, we got some eye contact. I like skiing, as I said, so I taught her to ski. It would take about one hour to do a run, a little run. And we like canoeing. It took 10 years for her to get the hang of paddling. She does yoga now. It only took three years to learn how to do a downward dog. You get the idea, right? Things take time, Rep repetition over and over. You see on TV the odd person with high function autism. That's beautiful, but most aren't like that. Now my daughter plays a bit, sings, and she has about 100 words. She smiles a lot, and she kisses. But she got there because of fitness. She got there because of contact. It was a way to reach out to her. It was a way for her to be with others. Fitness can help all people with autism. They need physical activity. It gives them self-esteem. It gives them meaning. It gives them purpose. The same thing that you give to people every day. Fitness, however, is an epidemic now, almost anywhere in the world. 30 years ago, one every 10,000 kids, one in 10,000 had autism. 15 years ago, it was one in 500. Now, depending on where you live in the world, it's one in 30 to one in 50. One in 30 to one in 50, and it's accelerating. So this sounds like so scary, but I believe that anything that can change within a person's lifetime that dramatically must have a cause and it must have an effect. With your help, we're going to help find that cause. And through fitness, right now we can help people with autism.